Welcome. The following technical support video is to show you how to use the color layer black background feature in multi-rip GP, a directed garment rip software. We'll start off with a graphic. This graphic comes from D Great Dane Graphics and the graphic is on a transparent background. With the color layer auto black background mask that we're going to use we're going to trick the rip into not printing anything that is black and this way what it'll do is it'll create our white underbase with a complete grayscale automatically for us so in the places where there's black ink like in the center of the surfboard there'll be no white ink drop there at all the darker colors and the darker greens in the leaves and stuff will have less black ink dropped or white ink I'm sorry dropped down there and then in the brighter colors there will be more white ink drop down. So to begin with we'll first start off with our graphic. I like to start off with my graphic and make sure the image size and mode are correct. So go up to the top, click on image and go down to mode and we want to make our graphic in RGB. RGB has a bigger color gamut space than CMYK. So once the mode set correctly we'll come down to our image size We'll set up our image size since we're printing it on a 12 and a half by 16 platen. Our width is 12.2, which almost goes all the way across the platen. Our height is 9.5333. The resolution in this case is 150 dpi. We can move it up to 200. Anything above 200 is really just too much ink for the shirt fabric to hold. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at 150 dpi for this case. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Now that I have my graphic set up, for the color layer auto mask black background, I need to have the graphic on a black background. So what I'll do is I'll go up to the top, click on layer, go to new, and go to layer. I will then call this my black background. Once I have my black background set, I will grab it and drag it to the bottom. And then I'll come over and select the square tool and make sure that my color is going to be black and then I'm going to put a black box into the graphic. Now my graphic is on a black background and this is what we'll use to trick the rip into creating our white underbase for us automatically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to file and go down to print. We're going to want to choose the MRGP with white ink selection and click on properties and go down to advance. The first thing we'll do is we'll set up our paper size or our platen size which is 12 and a half by 16. Notice that there is the 8 and a half by 12 and a postscript custom page size if you need to create your own platens. Print quality, in this case you have your choice between fine and super fine. We're just going to run with fine at this point. We'll then scroll down for color appearance. I'm going to go ahead and choose photo normal. Because this is a raster graphic, it has some good blends and transitions between colors going in. I don't want to use the vivid graphic because it'll tend to blotch up the different transitions and colors. Where photo normal tends to give you a better gradient skin tones on it. Next thing I'll do with the layer type is I'll go down to the layer type and choose color layer auto mask black background. Now you notice that two yellow triangles popped up. We'll address those yellow triangles in a couple minutes. But that's just telling us that two settings are off. You have your choice with the color passes and the white passes of doing multiple ones. In this graphic, I'm pretty fine with just running one of each for the white ink. You really don't even need it depending on what printer you have, so please run some tests. For the RGB source profile, I would recommend you choosing um, one that you find works best for you. For me, since this graphic has a lot of reds and blues, I prefer to use NTSC 1953. I'll scroll down. Since the graphic is a CMYK, or uh, an RGB, there's no need to use a CMYK source profile. For media type, I'm going to choose black cotton because that's what we're putting it onto. And then I can come down here and choose between print direction. In this case, I'm just going to go bi-directional. Speeds up the time. Typically, unidirectional is what I'd use for doing fine text. For the white ink density, depends on what type of fabric I'm going to put on. Light density I would use for bamboo and very light cotton or organic 
type fabric. Medium density is what you'll notice most of the t-shirts and heavy densities for sweatshirts. When we come down to the black ink under base behavior, you'll notice we have another yellow triangle there. In this case, when you pull down the drop down box, you'll notice that our only available selection is no under base, no black ink. That's because we're tricking the rip into anything that is black not to print. So that would automatically create our white under base force. So that's our only selection. If you wanted to still use this selection and be able to print black as well, you would have to do one extra step, and that's in another video we'll talk about, but it's underneath the layer type and it's capture black for next print. Again, we'll talk about that in another video. The final thing that you can set is going to be your auto white highlight threshold. In this case, you have different choices here. This feature will be explained in more detail, but most people prefer to use the 7% setting on that. Just to hit a slight white pass that is combined with the CMYK just to make the white pop off a little bit better. Once we have a rip setting set, we'll just go ahead and hit OK, OK. And okay, and now we're going to send the graphic to the rip. 